Good day everyone and once again we are back together uh, looking at trigonometry. So today we're going to be starting with trig graphs and um, if you're new to the channel uh, welcome and uh, please just hit that subscribe button or oh, you want to do it now because uh, obviously we'll continue to be your plug when it comes to maths and science learning. And uh, for those of you who might need assistance in mathematics or physical science, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, get in touch with us and our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, so uh, first of all, let's look at um, our approach is going to simply, I'm going to start with the sine graph. And of course, we're just going to progress as we continue. All right, let's start with the first thing that we look at. So when it comes to trig graphs, okay, let's start with the sine graph. We know that we've got several things that we look at uh, for a graph. Okay, so this will be A is equals to sine uh, of M multiplied by X. Okay, so in this case, what does A represent? So we say this is the amplitude of our graph, uh, the amplitude. Uh, look at my spelling going all haywire. So this is the amplitude of our graph. And in this case, uh, we look at, uh, so this is um, how high the graph goes. And then we say M in this case, uh, it's not the gradient, but it's the frequency. Of course, uh, you know, different people use different symbols, but in this case, this is going to be the frequency of the graph. Now, just stay with me a little bit uh, and we're going to just discuss. And later on, what we're going to do is to talk about the shifts uh, of the graph. Now, first thing that I want you to please remember when it comes to the sine graph is it would help you to know what the normal sine graph looks like, meaning I'm going to make a frequency of one and an amplitude of one. And so I'm going to start with just an ordinary sine graph. So y is equal to sine of x, right? I'm going to draw this for the period or at least uh, for the restrictions between x is less than 360, x is greater than 360. And I'm going to talk about just a few things when it comes to the sine graph. All right, so what would our graph look like? Okay, so we draw the Cartesian plane there. What the sine graph looks like? And of course, I know many people would uh, tend to say, okay, well, what does it look like at 90 and so on? Um, so. I just want you to keep this in your mind. Okay, so this is X and this is Y. Okay, so this is where X is one and Y, and uh, sorry, Y is, is one and Y is minus one there. And then we'll have uh, 90, 180, uh, 270 and 360. And then obviously we're going to have minus 90 over this side minus 180, minus 270, and minus 360. Okay, sorry, that looks a little bit wiggly, uh, but nonetheless. Right, so what does our normal sine graph look like? So the sine graph always starts, or rather uh, in this particular case for y is equals to sine of x, that means that we've got an amplitude of one, it means we've got a frequency of one. I'll just tell you about frequency a little bit later. Uh, so amplitude, that means that in this case, at 90, I know that the sine graph is one. You can put this in your calculator. You'll see that is the case. And then at um, 180, it's going to give us zero. At uh, 270, it's going to give us minus one. And at 360, it's simply going to give us uh, zero again. So what it looks like on this side is it's going to be a graph. Okay, I'm just trying to keep my hand steady. Okay, so it's a graph that looks like this. And at minus 90, I know that it will be minus one again at minus 180, it's zero. At 270, it's one. Um, so it's kind of a wave. It's a waveform. And in this case, a waveform looks something like this. So this is what a normal sine graph looks like. Okay. So just a couple of things to consider. All right. Now, when we talk about frequency, 
I want you to please remember, frequency goes hand in hand, you know, with the, uh, um, you know, what we call uh, in this case. Okay, so in fact, let me start talking about just the, the frequency alone. So this is, uh, this simply means that I can fit in one sine graph within a period of uh, 360. And that's the word I was looking for, period, right? So I want you to please remember that when they ask you about the period of this graph, now please, I want you to note. So period will always be, now I want you to note, it's going to be 360 divided by the frequency. And we said our frequency is M. Now in this case, what this simply means is when I've got the period of a graph, now uh, 360, we said our frequency is M and it's one in this case. So it means that the period would be 360. Now, that simply means how many sine graphs, full sine waves, can I include within a 360 uh, period? I can only have one graph. Can you see that? Uh, obviously, the sine graph would go up and obviously go down afterwards. So the period of this graph, meaning I can only draw a full sine graph within a 360 period and thereafter it repeats. OK, right now, of course, when I talk about frequency now, I want to just quickly look at that. OK, um, if they ask me what is uh, um uh, you know, the, okay, the way it exists in the X in this case. Um, so uh, it would be between, in this particular case, remember, that is the restriction. So it exists between negative 360. Sorry, I was supposed to put that as negative. Or another way of writing it would be X is an element of minus 360 uh, to 360. That's the restriction that we are given. Okay, so remember, uh, uh, we also have the amplitude of the graph as well, uh, being from negative one and one. Okay, so that simply means um, in this case, when I look at my graph, of course, within x, it would be x is an element of minus 360 and 360. Okay, so as a result, when I look at where it exists in X, okay, uh, 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 in the X axis, it's between those two restrictions. And of course, Y uh, would be an element of, uh, now I want you to please note, it exists between minus one and one, okay? So Y would be between minus one and one. And of course, it exists uh, between those restrictions uh, within the Ys, right? Now, what I want to do is I want to look at a sine graph that is, okay, we'll talk about the shift later on, and then we will talk about, um, you know, obviously the, you know, uh, the frequency as well, and uh, just changing the frequency over there. All right. Now, I want us to take another example of a graph. Now, what I want you to do as you as we take the examples, we're going to look at the full sine wave, okay, the original one. And of course, we're going to look at, uh, um, we're going to take that original one and sort of adapt it and, um, you know, kind of shift it. All right, now let's look at another example. All right, now looking at this graph, now what I want us to do is we just want to make sure that we can draw this graph. Now, what did I change on this particular graph? You'll see that now we have changed the amplitude, okay? So our amplitude is no longer one, but our amplitude is now equal to two. So as I said, just remember what the standard sine graph looks like. And then all we're going to do is, you know, uh, as far as amplitude is concerned, where it was actually one, we know that now it's going to be multiplied that by two and it's actually going to be two. So now in this case, let's draw that graph and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to have, now it's going to be minus 90. We're going to have 90 here. 
So the restriction that we are given, uh, in this case, we're looking at the domain, okay? So the domain in this case, it means where it exists in the X, it's 90, uh, minus 90 to 270. So I'm going to take those standard ones, 90, 180, I'm going to have 270. Right, now I know that for a normal sine graph, you would have, okay, you would have, uh, of course, at 90, it would be equal to 1. But in this case, remember, I need to multiply that by 2. So in this case, at 90, it's no longer, in fact, let's start at 0, by the way. At 0, 2 multiplied by 0 would still be 0. Okay, so I know at 0, I would still have uh, my graph at 0 there. Right, at 90, the normal sine graph is 1. But in this case, multiply that by the uh, amplitude. So that's going to be 1 times 2. So in this case, it's going to be 2. So I know I'm going to have 2 over there. Okay, at 180, again, our sine graph would have been 0. Okay, so 2 times 0 would give me 0. Okay, so it's going to be just a skewed graph a little bit. Okay, but um, at 270, uh, it would have been one, uh, negative 1. But in this case, what would it be? It would be minus 1 times 2. And in this case, you get an amplitude of minus 2. And so that would be our graph. So uh, on the positive side, this is the graph that I would have. Okay, now obviously at minus 90, uh, our graph would have been a negative 1. But again, a negative 1 times 2, that would give us negative 2. So in this case, that would be a negative 2 value. Okay, so our graph would look something like this. All right, now let's talk about a couple of things uh, on this particular graph. So let's talk about the domain, okay? Uh, it's easy to talk about the domain because in this case, you are given a restriction there, okay? So it means that our graph uh, for our domain, x is an element of uh, 0, uh, sorry, minus 90 rather, uh, to 270. This is where it exists in the x uh, axis. And then what about our range, okay? So our range in this particular case, right, where does it exist in the y, okay? So in y, so we know that y would be an element of negative 2 uh, to 2 in this particular case. So this would be our domain and this would be our range. And of course, what is our frequency once again? Um, uh, what would be the frequency of our graph? Remember, uh, our frequency is the uh, coefficient of x. And in this case, what's the coefficient of x? It's definitely 1. Um, and so our frequency is 1. Okay, but what about our period? So we said our period in this case, this is simply going to be 360 divided by the frequency. And we said our frequency is 1. And so it means that our period it's still going to be 360. Please, I want you to note in this case that, um, of course, to, you, you can see that that's not a, a full sine wave. Uh, it would have continued over there at 360. To, so to have a full sine wave, it, you would still require a 360 period. Okay, right. So um, that is as far as the frequency is concerned, changing the frequency. Uh, I mean, uh, changing the amplitude rather. Okay, so let's look at what about when we change the frequency. Let's take another example. All right, now looking at uh, y is equals to sine of 2x. So what did we change this time around? We changed the frequency of the graph. Now let me kind of explain to you what frequency is. In a nutshell, when you're looking at frequency is how many sine graphs can I draw within a normal period of 360? And this simply says, because our frequency is 2, it means I can fit in two full sine waves, you know, within a 360 period. So now, uh, let's try to draw those graphs. Oh, okay, that graph. So I would say, well, look, in this case, it means that, now, let's start here. 
what would be our period this time around, okay? So meaning, um, when would I be able to complete a full sine wave? So a period, remember we say it's going to be 360 divided by my frequency value, and my frequency value this time is 2. So that would be 360 divided by 2, and that's 180. Now, please, I want you to note what this means. It means that we would be able to fit in a full sine wave within a 180 period. So you should be able to have completed a full sine wave within 180 period, right? So now, that means that everything else about the sine wave would be now squashed together. So instead of having a sine wave uh, that would be, you know, uh, stretched uh, between uh, 360, 0 and 360, now you're going to try and squash it between uh, 0 and 180. And of course, between 300 and, uh, 0 and 360, you'd be able to fit in two, uh, uh, two sine graphs. So now to do that, that simply means everything, um, your normal uh, points would now be divided by 2. Um, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So whatever would have happened at 90 now would happen at 90 divided by 2, which in this case would be 45. Whatever would happen at uh, 180 would happen at 180 divided by 2, which is 90. Okay, whatever would happen at 270 would happen at 270 divided by 2, which is 135. And of course, what would happen at uh, 360 would now happen at 360 divided by 2, which is 180. So, which means I'm going to draw that in red. So our amplitude is 1. Okay, so uh, let's make that amplitude 1 there. So what would have happened at 90? At 90, I know that the sine graph is uh, 1, but now it's going to happen at 45. Okay, what would have happened at, at 180? We know it's 0, but this time around it's going to happen at 90. So, um, so and 135 would be minus 1. And now I want you to note what has happened this time. Okay. Can you see I've been able to draw a full sine graph within a 180 period? So what does that mean? It means I can draw another sine graph um, within another 180 period up until 360. So because my restriction says up until 360, so I'm going to continue that. So that's going to be 180 plus uh, 45. I think that's going to be 2 to 5. Okay, and uh, of course, I'm going to have 270 somewhere there. Okay, and I'm going to have uh, 315. Okay, so 315 uh, over there. Sorry about that. And then obviously, I'm going to have 360 over there. So which means, okay, again, I'm going to keep repeating. I know the sine wave uh, just repeats like that. So it would be zero there, it would be minus one there, and it would be zero again there. So there it is. Now in this case, within a 360 period, what has happened? I've been able to fit in one up until 180, two within 360, can you see? So it means that my frequency is two. So therefore it means I've been able to draw two um, uh, sine graphs. But remember, our restriction was up until minus 90. So in this case, I'm going to have 45, minus 45 on this side, and minus 90 over there, okay? And in this case, for my sine graph, I'm simply going to have at minus 45, there it is, minus one, and minus 90, it's going to be zero. And in this case, there is my sine graph for y is equals to the sine of 2x. All right, now uh, let's take something else. Of course, now we've changed amplitude and we've changed the frequency. What I want us to do quickly is to talk about the horizontal and the vertical shifts 
uh, for the graph. And of course, uh, what we'll try and do is, uh, of course, uh, consolidate everything uh, just at the end. All right, um, just looking at this graph quickly. Now you should be very careful. There is what we call the horizontal and the vertical shift. Now what this simply means, I've taken a normal sine graph, okay? And what I've done is I've shifted it in this case vertically. So it means that I've taken a normal sine graph and I am moving it uh, along the y axis, right? I'm moving it, uh, in this case, I would have moved it upwards. All right, now there is a difference. Please note the difference between the following. When I say y is equals to sine of x plus one, that's different, right? Uh, this and that are two different things. We'll talk about the other one uh, just a little later. Okay, but I want us to look at this one. So I've got y is equals to sine of x plus one. So what did I do? I'm taking the sine graph. In fact, uh, I didn't give that a restriction. Okay, let's say x um, uh, is between, yeah, let's say zero uh, to, um, let's say 180, okay? So I'm taking that graph between zero and 180. So first of all, what does that graph look like? Okay, so... I know I'm taking a graph between zero and 180. So in this case, because my period, or rather my frequency is one, so that means for my period once again, what am I going to have? It's going to be 360 divided by my um, uh, uh, frequency. And my frequency in this case, the coefficient of X is one. So it means that I'd be able to draw a full sign graph, um, you know, uh, between a 360 period or within a 360 period, right? So at the end of the day, what I have is, okay, so I will have 90 as per usual, uh, 180 because my period is 360. So I should be able to draw a full sine wave within that 360 period, okay? However, my restriction says I should keep it uh, to from 0 to 180 so it means that uh, the only graph I'm looking for is up until that position over there now uh, very quickly what is that going to look like now I know for a normal sign graph now please I want you to listen carefully for a normal sign graph I know that a sign of 90 degrees would give me one so sign of 90 would be one, okay? Or in fact, let's start with sine of zero. Okay, so I'm gonna draw those in white, uh, the white dots, but I'm just going to say something in a few, okay? And then um, sine of 180 is going to give me zero, okay? So for a normal sine graph, it would have been something like this. Of course, uh, it would continue this way, okay? But now what am I doing? I am taking that normal sine graph and I am shifting it upwards, okay, because that's a plus, so it means that I'm taking it up. So I'm shifting it upwards by one. So it means where x was zero, uh, um, uh, y was zero as well, but now it means I'm going to shift it up by one. So it's no longer going to be zero. It's going to be zero plus one, which now I'm going to do that in yellow, uh, it means that now at x is equals to zero, y is, it was supposed to be zero, but it's zero plus one. And in this case, that would be one. Where x is 90, the normal graph was supposed to be one, but what is one plus one? Okay, so that would be two. So it means I've shifted it upwards by one again. All right, so where X again is 180, where the graph, the normal sign graph was supposed to be 180, I mean, a, a zero again at 180. Now it's going to be zero plus one. And so therefore that would be one again. So it means I've taken the sign graph and I've shifted it upwards by one. Okay, one unit upwards. 
So that's what my graph would look like. Now, uh, you know, just for you to see what the rest of the graph would have looked like, of course, my restriction said between 0 and 180. But just to show you what it would look like, you know, going to 360, is that remember at 270, it was supposed to be a 1 there. Okay, let me do that in, in white. Okay, it was supposed to be minus 1 over there. Okay, but now it's no longer going to be, it's going to be minus 1 plus 1. So that means it would be at 0. Okay. And of course, at 360, it was supposed to be zero. That's in white there. But in this case, it's going to be zero plus one. And so it would be sitting at one. So what your full sign graph would look like in that case is it would continue just like that. Okay. So that would be your full sign graph. So of course, uh, if you were to consider just a uh, uh, taking it over that side, this is what it would look like. So you've taken the normal sign graph and you've shifted it upwards by one unit. Okay, right. Now let's take a vertical shift, okay, a, a horizontal shift, and then I think we would uh, try to conclude our lesson from then on. Okay, all right. So here, here's our horizontal shift this time. So we're given the graph of y is equals to sine of x plus 30. Now, all right, so we said we'll try to draw this graph between um, 0 and 180. That's our restriction. Okay, so let's try and do that. So in this case, of course, our amplitude is 1 as, you know, as per usual. You know, usually it is 1. But of course, we did have a situation where it was different. So now I want you to please note when it comes to the horizontal shift, it means I've taken the sine graph and I have shifted it by 30 degrees. Notice in this case, I've shifted it 30 degrees. Now there's a plus there. So for the horizontal shift, when I shift uh, uh, by plus 30 degrees, it means I'm actually shifting it to the left. You know, and the reason for that is that you're not actually shifting the graph, you're shifting the axes, okay? So what happens is that when you shift the axis to your right, then your graph tends to go to the left. So when you've got a positive there, it means that my sine graph would have been shifted to the left. Now, I want us to quickly see what would happen. Under normal circumstances, the sine graph would be at 90, 180, 270, and 360. So in this case, I want you to please listen carefully. Okay, I'm going to draw minus 90 uh, just so that you can see it as well. Okay, so let's label those. So that's 90, 180, 270, and 360. Now, please uh, listen carefully. So in this case, what would normally, in fact, let me just, uh, um, you know, just draw a, as a dotted line, the normal graph of sine, um, of x so it would look like this between 0 and 360 of course uh, continuing over to the other side uh, it would look something like this now I am going to draw in the yellow the graph of sine of x minus 30 so it means it would be the normal sine graph but only shifted to the left by 30 degrees remember I said when that sign is positive means I'm shifting to the left when the sign is negative means I'm shifting to the right now in this case what would have happened at 90 okay for the normal sign graph would now happen at 90 minus 30 remember we said we are shifting to the left right so it would happen at 90 minus 30 so therefore it would happen at 60 degrees so my graph, remember sine of 90 would be 1. Now it means that sine of 60 would be 1. Okay. Now what would have happened at 180 would happen at 180 minus 30 shifted to the left. So it would have been 0 uh, at 180. But now it is going to be 0 at uh, 130. Okay, um, at 130 minus uh, 
minus i mean 180 minus 30 and so that would be at 150 so that's 60 that's 150 now what would have happened at 170 okay is now going to occur at 270 minus 250 uh, i mean uh, 200 uh, i mean uh, 270 minus 30 uh, which would actually be 240 so in this case now that would be uh, again negative one however please keep in mind we've got a restriction so what would have happened at zero which is uh you know at si sine of zero is equal to zero but now what would have happened at zero is now going to happen at minus 30 okay so your sine graph is actually going to start at minus 30 in this case now uh, let's try and label and plot those points there. It's zero over there. It's minus one at that point there. So your sine graph in the yellow, now this is the sine of x plus 30, okay? It would look something like this, okay? And of course, once it's now going would go all the way up until uh, 330 okay so this is the sine graph shifted by 30 degrees obviously to the left now i'm going to try and remove the normal sine graph so that we can see this one quite well i'm also going to get rid of those points there okay um but now Keep in mind, what did they say to us? They said we should keep to a restriction of 180. So that would mean that I would have to draw the graph up until that point here, which was 180. So in this case, all of that goes away. Okay, I'm just going to erase all of this uh, over here. Okay, let's try and remove all of this here. Okay, and... Um, you know so that we can see it so that would be our graph there so this would be 60 uh, over there and that would be uh, obviously at 90 which is our normal point and now i'm going to remove the rest of it so that we are only left with the graph up until 180 and this is what it would look like okay the graph would peak at 60 degrees in terms in instead of 90 okay and instead of uh, uh, the, you know, the X intercept being at 180, now it's going to be at 150. And that would be essentially your graph that is on uh, shifted um, uh, horizontally. All right. So I hope that you are able to follow on in what we are doing. Okay. Uh, obviously, that's your Y over there. That's your X over there. And in this case, this is the yellow graph. That's what it would look like. Okay. So it's always easier to take any sine graph and always try to um, reference it from the normal sine graph. You know, that's if they ask you to draw the graph. Uh, but of course, uh, most of the time when we're dealing with functions, trig functions, uh, they would usually give you the graph and then, you know, ask you to uh, ask different questions about it. Uh, again, what's what's our domain in this case? Of course, it would be, you know, what is given over there. X is an element of 0 to 180. But what would be our range? Once again, so where would our graph start? Okay, so you'll see that um, in this case, when we take a sine of 150, uh, in fact, if I substitute 180 into my equation there, so that would be sine of 180 uh, plus 30. Okay, so that would be uh, so that would be sine of 210. Okay, so um, that would give me minus a half. So in this case. That's minus 1 over 2 there. So it means that my range, y would be an element of, now note in this case, it would be minus a half up until that maximum point there, which is 1. 
and that would be your range there. Of course, your frequency still remains one because the coefficient of X is one and um, uh, um, your frequency is one, but then it means that your period, uh, once again, remember, you are still able to draw one sine graph within, uh, so it means that your period would still be 360. Okay, sorry about that. So 360 divided by your period, I mean your frequency, which is one, and it would still, uh, you'd still draw a full sine wave within a 360 degrees uh, period. Okay, right. And uh, let's just take one last example, okay, where I try to mix up a couple of things and then we call it a day. We'll be looking at the cost graph uh, next time. All right, now looking at our final question. So I'm drawing a graph of y is equals to two sine a half of x minus one. So a couple of things that we've changed there. Of course, we've changed the amplitude. We've changed the frequency as well as uh, we've shifted this graph uh, vertically. Right, now quickly, I want us to uh, look at it together. So now we are going to have to draw this graph between minus 180 to 180. Okay, so in this case, what would this graph look like? Right, now keep in mind that our period this time, now uh, notice our period is simply going to be 360 divided by the frequency, which is a half, and you'll see that uh, it gives us 720. What does that mean? It means we'll only be able to draw a full sine graph within a, 20, a 720 period. So what that simply means is that within 360, you'd only be able to draw half of the sine graph. So remember, half of the sine graph is just that peak there. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do is we know that normally we would have 90, 180, 270, and 360. Okay, so I'm just going to have those there. Okay, uh, 270 and 360. And of course, also going the other way, that's minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, and minus 360 as you go on the other direction. Okay, we're not going to need that much. So uh, in this case, let's keep it there. So I would say, well, that's one there. That's minus one. So that makes that two. Okay, so that's one and two there. That's minus one and minus two. Um, I don't know if I've left enough space for myself. Um, so if we say that peak there, the, the, the amplitude is two. Right, now I want you to think about it. What would a normal sine graph look like? I'm, again, I'm going to try and draw it in white. Okay, so normal sine graph, it would peak there. It would be minus one over there and you'd have the, uh, the full graph there. So again, minus a half, uh, minus one rather and um, there it is, it's one over there. And of course you'd complete it at minus 360. And so that's what your normal sine graph would look like. Now, keep in mind, what's going to happen to this graph? It's now going to be uh, uh, stretched because remember within a 360 period, I'll only be able to draw half of the graph, right? So meaning what would have happened at 90, that is uh, now it's going to now okay at 180. Remember, we've stretched it now, okay? So it would have happened at 90. So now it's going to happen at 90 divided by half, which is 180. So it would have been one under normal circumstances, but notice this time around, okay? it's going to be one times two, okay, which is two, but then we bring it down by one unit, okay? Right, so uh, I, I know I'm probably speaking Chinese now. Uh, this is not for the faint-hearted, but nonetheless, 
uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow on. So in this case, in, in fact, let's start at zero, okay? So if I say, and by the way, you're more than welcome to put this in your calculator uh, because you'll say two sine uh, of, um, you know, if, if, if x is zero, so you'll have two sine half of zero, which is um, simply going to be uh, zero minus one. So it means that your graph is actually going to start now. Let me do that in, a, in the yellow color. So this is going to be minus one, okay? Now you keep in mind, then we go to 90 if you wanted to, okay? But uh, I'm simply going to go to 180. So at 180, that would be half of 180, which is 90. To, so uh, two times the sine of 90 uh, would be two, but minus one there. So that would actually give us one. So it would be the peak there. And of course, uh, in this case, you can continue if you want to. And minus 360, we'd have it, uh, I mean, at 360, you'd have that graph over there. So your yellow graph, okay, um, if we took uh, that half of 90, which is 45, okay, so I'm just going to, Try and draw my graph over there. Okay, and uh, that would be 45. Okay, so so my graph would look something like this. Okay, right, so that's what our graph would look like. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, I think yeah, I think, I think that point should be actually just above 90. Okay, so let's go to the next uh, uh, side. So in this case, uh, what would have happened at 90? It would have been one there, but it's now going to uh, uh, occur rather at 180. Okay. Um, so now I know that at 100 minus 180, it would have been minus 1, okay? But remember, in this case, it's 2 times minus 1, which is 2, okay? And minus 1, and uh, that would be, uh, okay, minus 1, which is uh, 1, okay? Uh, so let me just try to draw the graph there. In fact, let me just make the calculation. So it's going to be 2 sine of 0 0.5 times negative 180. Okay, negative 180. Okay, so that would give me, uh, so negative 180. And let me close that bracket and I say minus 1. Okay, so actually that gives me negative three all right so there our graph would actually be negative three so meaning uh, our graph would sort of go something like this okay right um at 360 let me just verify there right so this is what our graph would actually look like okay Right, uh, if you've been patient enough uh, to look at me draw this graph, uh, all I'm just trying to say is that whenever we draw the trig graph, uh, in this case, you need to always be mindful. Now, the restriction that we're given uh, in this particular case is up until 180. So it means we don't need uh, the rest of this graph from here. Okay, so we can actually try to erase the graph uh, at this point here so we can end the graph over there and of course we don't need the rest of it over there okay so this is what your graph would look like okay um, in this case so we just make sure that we draw our, uh, our x and our y over there and yeah so that is what your graph would look like okay Right, so what you can simply do, uh, perhaps uh, you can still have your normal points, your 90, 180 and so on, and just make sure that you use the table method, you know, uh, uh, you say X and Y there, and then you say X is minus 180, 
uh, because you had, and then you say x is minus 90, x is 0, you'd say x is 90, and x is 180. And of course, what you simply do is just insert these values into your equation, okay, and get the actual points, all right? And then, of course, you can just plot uh, those points together. Right, uh, ladies and gents, that is as far as the sine graph is concerned. Um, I think what we'll do with the other graphs, we won't be as exhaustive since you understand what the horizontal shift and the vertical shift entails. Um, so what we'll just try and do is just hit the ground running and just do uh, just a couple of graphs uh, the next time. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. Uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, of course uh, that notification bell as well um, and please just make sure that you like and you share uh, our page just tell as many people as possible uh, you know that you've got a plug when it comes to maths and science otherwise from me for now i will see you guys next time shop shop